The supplication that I'm going to talk about today and uh, really break down this particular dua and what it means for us in terms of vulnerability uh, comes in a conversation between a father and a daughter, uh, except that this father happens to be uh, the greatest man and the daughter happens to be the queen of the women of paradise. And that is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, talking to his daughter, Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And uh, we learn certain habits from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaching his daughter, Fatima, uh, in her own lives. So, for example, going to sleep at night and glorifying Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala 33 times, praising Allah 33 times, declaring His greatness 34 times, to make it 100, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar, before we go to sleep. We learn this from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaching Fatima Az-Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha about how to prepare herself for sleep as well as uh, his beloved cousin, son-in-law, companion, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This dua uh, is one that comes in Sunan al-Nasai where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam expresses his love to Fatima radiallahu anha. He tells her that he loves her. But he does not just tell her that he loves her as a means of proving or not proving, solidifying that love. The Prophet ﷺ gives her an expression of love, which is a meaningful supplication that she can uh, take to herself every day and every evening. And that is that the Prophet ﷺ said, pay close attention to what I'm sharing with you. Do not leave off a morning or an evening. Do not let a single morning or an evening pass without saying, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith, aslih li sha'ni kulla, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata'in. Again, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith, aslih li sha'ni kulla, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata'in. The translation of this supplication, O oh, ever living, O oh, ever sustaining, O oh, ever living, O oh, ever sustaining. By your mercy, I seek relief. Do not leave me to myself, even for the blink of an eye. Correct all of my affairs. So, O oh, ya O oh, ever living, O oh, ever sustaining. Bi rahmatika astaghith. In your mercy, I seek relief. Aslih li shatni kulla. Rectify all of my affairs. And do not leave me to myself. Do not leave me to myself, even for the blink of an eye. Now, before I break down this hadith and this precious uh, wasiya, this precious uh, bestowal that the Prophet ﷺ gave to his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha that we all benefit from today, which we are to say every morning between Fajr and sunrise and every evening between Asr and Maghrib, uh, this was also the habit of the Prophet ﷺ himself. So what he was giving Fatima <coughs> was what he himself would do. As Anas ibn Malik ta'ala anhu says, <coughs> that whenever a matter would distress the Prophet ﷺ, when anything would bother the Prophet ﷺ, you could hear him saying, Ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith. O ever living and O ever sustaining, in your mercy I seek relief. And he also said that the Prophet ﷺ said, within the same narration, he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, be constant with saying, Ya dhal jalali wal ikram, O possessor of majesty and honor. Uh, a few nights ago, we spoke about this concept of diversifying the names of Allah as we call upon him as a means of connecting with Allah. So all 99 names belong to one God. And by connecting with all of those names, we have a deeper appreciation and connection with that one God. And so here you have a practical example of, uh, of, of four names that the Prophet ﷺ would use frequently and commanded others to use frequently as well. وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَتَعِينَ And do not leave me to myself for even the blink of an eye. This is probably uh, one of the most comprehensive supplications because everything in this supplication is comprehensive. And so you start with the very beginning. Of the most co comprehensive names of Allah Himself, يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمْ Okay? O ever living, O ever sustaining. The scholars say about these two names that all of the attributes of Allah, all of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stem from these two names. Why? Because in uh, when you talk about al-hayy, sifat al-dhatiyah, and you talk about al-qayyum, sifat al-fa'liyah. Sifat al-dhatiyah refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his essence, 
right? So he is the ever living. He's the originator of life. No life comes to be except for him. No life ends except by his, but by al hay and no life is brought back except by him, and he is always living, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of the names that speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, uh, his attributes that speak to his essence, those are uh, all included in him being al-hay. No one bestowed any of those things upon him because he is the originator of life. No one has lived before him, he is the first. And so all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that speak to that about him uh, fall in that category of al-hay. Al-Qayyum, ever sustaining in every way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sustaining. Allah did not just originate, Allah is always in control. And that's especially important to remember when things seem to be going out of control, that Allah is always in control, whether it's political turmoil or there's a global health pandemic or there's a war that's raging, whatever it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains in control. Allah remains in control of all of our lives individually as well. And every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains in control of our lives in that special way. And so Allah remains in control always. He never lets go. Okay, It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates and then loses sight. It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala originates and then loses control. Okay, And that's especially important to remember in these times. And so these are two of the most comprehensive names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then. Okay, they're also, according to many of the scholars, the greatest names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ said that the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is found in, uh, in, in, in uh, Ayat al Kursi as well as Surah Taha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to recite Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayy al qayyum. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayy al qayyum. So Allah, by Him, there is no God, al hayy al qayyum, the ever living, the ever sustaining. Uh, also in uh, Surah Taha, وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّمُ Okay, that everything is presented and extinguished and uh, and, and, and equalized before الْحَيِّ الْقَيُّمُ Before the ever-living and the ever-sustaining. The Prophet ﷺ also <coughs> once heard a man uh, call out to Allah and he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمُ Okay, O oh, ever-living, O oh, ever-sustaining. And the Prophet ﷺ said, to Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, do you know by what he has made that supplication? And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah bi ismihi alladhi du'iya bihi, idha du'iya bihi, ajab. He said that he called Allah by a name, that if you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by that name, he will certainly respond to you. Okay? And so, <clears throat> Allah al-hayy al-qayyum. So, this dua, ya hayyu ya qayyum, O oh, ever living, O oh, ever sustaining, the most comprehensive names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bi rahmatika astaghif. In your mercy, I seek relief. In your mercy, I seek relief. Okay? The most comprehensive attribute of Allah is His rahmah, is His mercy. Okay? Because His rahmah covers everything. His rahmah covers <clears throat> all of your sins. His mercy covers all of your sins. His mercy covers all of your needs in this life. His mercy covers everything you seek from Him in the hereafter. Okay? His mercy covers your worldly affairs. His mercy covers your affairs of the hereafter. His mercy covers everything. And when Ayyub alayhi salam, when the Prophet Job, peace be upon him, called out to Allah, what did he appeal to? Ar Rahmah, His mercy. Allah's mercy is His Jannah. Allah's mercy is His forgiveness. Allah's mercy is His relief. Okay? So the most comprehensive names of Allah, al Hay al Qayyum, and then the most comprehensive attribute that you could call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, His Rahmah, His mercy. And then the most comprehensive ask, Aslihni Sha'ni Kulla. Okay? Correct or rectify all of my affairs. The Prophet ﷺ, without any istithna, without any exception, said, rectify all of my affairs, which means rectify my worldly affairs, my dunya affairs, my religious affairs, my dini affairs and my hereafter affairs, my akhir affairs. Don't leave anything out. Rectify all of my affairs in a way that there's a perfect balance. <clears throat> when we call upon Allah, Allah taught us to call upon Him and say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ <clears throat> Oh Allah, grant us the best of this life and the best of the next and protect us from the punishment of the nar. 
So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't leave anything out. Don't leave your dunya out. Don't just ask Allah for the, for the hereafter. Ask Allah for this world as well. When we make istikhara, when we ask Allah for guidance in a particular uh, matter of ours, what do we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That if you know that this is good for me in my worldly affairs, in my religious affairs, and in my eventual pursuit in the hereafter, then facilitate it for me. And so the most comprehensive ask is, O oh Allah, take control of all of my affairs. Rectify all of my affairs. Aslih li sha'ni kulla, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata'in. And don't leave me to myself, even for the blink of an eye. You have to learn to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with major affairs in life, with major things in life, with how things are going to happen for you in regards to your wealth, in regards to your health, in regards to family. You have to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, وَلَا تَكِنِّي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَ تَعِينَ Don't leave me to myself even for this. How often do you blink? without paying attention. And the ulama, they say <coughs> that what's so special about tarfata'in, the blink of an eye, is that you blink unknowingly, okay? So the blinking of the eye is subtle. There is no active, uh, active effort that's put to blinking of the eye. It's being done constantly to keep your eyes watered, to keep your eyes moist. And subhanAllah, <coughs> a friend of mine actually in Louisiana, he had a stroke that, and, and some of you may have heard me mention this story in the past. It's actually real, and he actually might be watching this khutbah. Um, he had a stroke that took away, uh, or that, that, that took away temporarily the ability to blink his eye, uh, on half of his face. Okay. So just one eye. So he couldn't move half of his face temporarily. And he was saying, you know, subhanAllah, because how much had to be done for him to, uh, just put eye drops in and just to keep his eye moistened. And you never would, would think to thank Allah for the blinking of the eye because it happens without your knowledge. You're not actively blinking your eye. And the wisdom of that <clears throat> is not just the smallness of the process, that you're asking Allah to take control and rectify even the smallest of your affairs. It's even the affairs that you're not paying attention to, but that are highly consequential. Right? Everything that's happening in the background that's necessary for you to live, that's necessary for you to breathe, that's necessary for you to persist. Okay? You want Allah to take control of those things that you're actively aware of and those things that you're not aware of. Those things that you think to make dua for that are good for you, to supplicate Him for that are good for you. And those things that you would not even think to ask Him for, right? But that He knows are necessary for you. So if you look at this dua once again, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum. O ever living, O ever sustaining, the most comprehensive names of Allah. Bi rahmatika astaghith. In your mercy, I seek relief. The most comprehensive attribute of Allah being His mercy. The most encompassing attribute of Allah being His mercy. Aslih li sha'ni kulla. Asking Allah the most comprehensive ask to rectify all of my affairs. Wala takilni ila nafsi. And don't abandon me to myself. Don't leave me to myself, even for the blink of an eye, right? So to be so comprehensive in rectifying your affairs and taking control of your life and not leaving you to your own devices, that Allah does not even leave you to this, to the blinking of an eye. And I want to talk about, you know, the concepts here that are highlighted in this dua. And so I hope, inshallah, very active, uh, uh, you know, a call that you can take, inshallah ta'ala, after, uh, after this lecture, is to make sure that you say this every single day and every single evening, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gave it to Fatima radiallahu anha and said, don't let a day or a night pass without saying this between Fajr and sunrise or between Asr and Maghrib. And of course, that's not the only time you can say it. And as is, as is narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was stressed or when something made him anxious, when he was under duress, which a lot of us are feeling these days, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would frequently say this supplication over and over and over again. But I want to talk about the concepts that are being highlighted here, which is this idea of victory and vulnerability, strength and submission. Victory and vulnerability, serenity and submission, peace of mind and submitting to Allah's will and decree, and the victory and the strength that comes from that vulnerability. Um, <clears throat> Abi Qudama rahimahullah, he, he says that uh, a person recited the ayah in the Qur'an وَتَوَكَلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِهِ وَكَفَى بِهِ بِذُنُوبِ عِبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا It's the ayah in Surah Al-Furqan وَتَوَكَلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ Put your trust in the one who is ever living and does not die 
وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِهِ And declare His greatness, declare His, his praises, proclaim His praises. وَكَفَى بِهِ بِذُنُوبِ عِبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever acquainted with all of your sins, with the sins of His servants. And so <clears throat> He says that أَقْبَلْ عَلَيَّ سُلَيْمَانَ الْخَوَاسِ uh, Sulaiman al-Khawas uh, rahimahullah is one of the great aesthetics, uh, the great uh, people of Zuhud that we find um, in our tradition. He said to, he said to me, Abu Qudama, ما ينبغي لعبد بعد هذه الآية أن يلجأ إلى أحد بعد الله في أمره That there is no one, no one of the servants of God after coming across this verse would find it befitting to seek shelter, refuge in anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of their affairs. He said, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتَوَكَلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Put your trust to the one who's ever living and does not die. فَأَخْبَرَكَ أَنَّهُ لَا يَمُوتِ وَأَنَّ جَمِيعَ خَلْقِهِ يَمُوتُونَ And so he informed you that he does not die, but that all of his servants die. And then he followed that up by saying, وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِهِ then, then glorify his praises. And so he gave you the path to him, the path to worship him. Okay? So you have access to al hay al-ladhi la yamut. So he commanded you to then worship him and glorify him. وَكَفَى بِهِ بِذُنُوبِ عِبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا فَأَخْبَرَكَ بِأَنَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بَصِيرٌ And it is enough of him or he is well acquainted with the sins of his servants. And so he made you well aware that he knows of all of your shortcomings. So what more do you need after that than al-ghani al-hamid? Than the one who is independent, self-sufficient, not needing anything from anyone else, not in terms of, of material things, nor praise. Allah does not need, He has al-ghani al-hamid. He doesn't need anything from you in terms of giving, nor does He even need your praise. Your praise is for your own benefit. And so Allah gives you access, al-ghani al-hamid, even though you are madhnub and faqir, even though you are sinful and poor, you know, vulnerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have access to Him all the time. And there's also another jump from this ayah that... <clears throat> You know, uh, a person might feel unworthy. You know, I can't call upon Allah. Maybe Allah won't answer me because of this. But what's the point of me calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's, that's a verse that's for the sages, that's for the Sahaba, that's for the pious predecessors. But I've got no access to God. How am I going to call upon Him with all of my sins? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you when He commands you with tawakkul to trust Him and to worship Him in the same verse that He's well acquainted with your sins. Allah knows about your sins. He knows about your shortcomings. And so long as you are actively trying to overcome those sins and overcome those shortcomings, then call upon Him. Put your trust in Him. Don't worry, right? They're not going to hold you back in the Lahi Ta'ala so long as you are actively trying to eliminate those sins. And that's the question for you, right? You can, you can ask, why is Allah allowing this to happen? And why is this happening this way? But here's the question, why are you insisting on those particular sins, right? Remove those sins. Don't let those sins corrupt your supplication. Don't let those sins, uh, you know, pollute your thoughts and thinking that what's the point of supplicating and what's the point of putting my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next part of this is, and, and this is really important, because I've heard a lot about in the last few weeks, naturally, right? Fears. I'm afraid. If I'm not afraid for my health, <clears throat> I'm afraid for the health of my loved one. And if I'm not afraid of the health of my loved one or my own health, I'm worried about my wealth. I'm worried about losing my job. I'm worried about not being able to put food on the table. And how do I make peace with this when it comes to my dua? How do I make peace with this when it comes to my supplication? And what needs to happen is you need to make peace with what you can't control. And that has to span everything from your life to your death, to your wealth, to your health, to the way that your supplication is answered. What does that mean? You know, the angel wrote down in your in, in the mother in, 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 your, in your mother's womb, your date of death, wrote down your, your life, wrote down your risk, wrote down your sustenance. I need to come to peace that I can't control those things. Okay? Now, what that also means is that I need to find vulnerability in my dua to be able to say, I don't want Allah to answer me in accordance with what I think is best for me. I want Him to answer me in accordance with what He knows is best for me. I don't want Allah to answer me in accordance with what I think is best for me. I want Him to answer me in accordance with what He knows is best for me. Aslihli shatni kulla. Rectify all of my affairs. 
So I need to come to terms with Allah knowing what I don't know and being okay with that. Okay? It's, you know, His will. And that should not make me discouraged in my dua. If anything, it should empower me in my supplication. Because Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I don't concern myself with the answer. That's in Allah's domain. What I concern myself with is the ability to make the dua, the tawfiq to make the dua, the success in actually uttering the supplication. Because I know that if I make the supplication, that Allah is going to answer it, right? Allah will answer it in a way that He sees best, and I'm com- I'm comfortable with that, right? I'm, I'm comfortable relinquishing my affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like I wouldn't want Allah to leave this blinking of an eye to me, I wouldn't even be able to control my, the, the own affairs of my body. If Allah left all of us, just to control every process in our bodies to live for a minute, we would all die, right? Because I don't even know what's happening inside of me in order for me to live. SubhanAllah, so the complications of this virus and you know the vulnerability of health and the, and the unique ways in which we exist and the unique ways in which our existence in the worldly sense is threatened all the time. I don't, if I can't even control my body for a minute or two, I'm certainly not capable of controlling everything around me. I'm happy and confident and at peace with Allah controlling everything. And I actively want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify all of my affairs, even if I don't understand or like the particular way that my affairs are being lined up. I'm, I'm at peace with it. And that's the thing, I don't have to, I don't have to say that I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I just have to say that I'm at peace with the wisdom of it, that and, and not knowing the wisdom of it. I'm at peace with, with how everything is happening, but that doesn't mean I'm not struggling. The struggle in and of itself is ibadah, is part of the worship, right? The struggle to understand <coughs> and the ability to pray and supplicate despite that struggle to understand, right? That is the worship. And coming to terms with knowing Allah is in control means gaining greater focus with what you can control, all right? So it's not just, it's not just finding your strength. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on finding your strength right now. Right? And you're going to hear all these quotes and all these lectures and all these sermons and all these reminders about find your strength and your vulnerability. It's about knowing where to exert your strength. What do I exert it towards? Right. So I leave things in the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to du'a, when it comes to supplication and the things that are out of my control. I trust his knowledge more than I trust mine. I trust his wisdom more than I trust mine. I trust his mercy more than I trust mine. I trust the comprehension of all of those affairs lining up more than I trust my ability to line them all up. I can't even line up the processes in my own body. I certainly don't want to be in charge of lining up all of my affairs outside of my body. I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of that. But I'm going to do my part and exert towards what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me to exert towards. Okay, and I and I'm at peace with that. All right, so I have to have vulnerability and letting Allah do His part, and then doing mine, and then being at peace with how it all plays out. I'm, you know, Subhanallah. And this is, and please don't miss. But like, if if I'm meant to die in in a pandemic, or if I'm meant to live, or if I, I'm I'm at peace with all of that. I just want to do everything that's pleasing and that's that's productive in the process. But I'm at peace with how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala lets this all play out. Okay. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to struggle sometimes because of my lack of comprehension. That means I'm at peace with knowing that he comprehends. Okay? I will struggle, but I'm at peace with the way that he comprehends, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll leave you all with a really, really beautiful uh, narration. SubhanAllah, if there was... I wish there was a way to just tell people. Maybe I will tell people. If you don't feel like listening to the whole uh, lecture today, <laughs> just fast forward to the end. Because I was looking through the books of the pious predecessors and some of their sayings, and uh, this one really, really struck me as particularly relevant right now. Particularly relevant where we're going to become vulnerable in so many different ways. And we're going to feel that vulnerability in ways that we might have thought we never would have been vulnerable. Okay? And uh, it's by a great sage, a great scholar, Hatim al-Assam, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. And Abu Naim, he reports that Hatim al-Assam was asked, um, how did you construct your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Like, what are the ways in which you constructed your tawakkul? You know, everyone says, tawakkul ala Allah, have trust in God, have trust in God, have trust in God. But how did you build build your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How did you actually, yani ma banayta amrak tawakkul? How did you build it? How did you construct it? If tawakkul was a building, how did you build that building of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he said that I came to terms with four things. 
So he actually talks about knowledge. And Hatim al-Assam was one of the greatest worshippers of all time. An incredible human being. Uh, I I absolutely, subhanAllah, adore uh, the man, rahimahullah, just for the gems that he's left us behind with his words and with his example. Hatim al-Assam, he said, I came to terms with four things. Ala khisal in arba. So my building is built on four different things. He said, Alimtu an rizqi la yakuluhu ghayri. He said, I knew, I, I came to terms with the fact that my sustenance will not be taken by another person. No one's going to take my sustenance. No other person will take my sustenance. So he says, so I came to peace with that in myself. Okay. Uh, so I came to terms with that, peace with that with myself. Meaning no one else is going to take my risk. I'm at peace with, with that. He says, And I came to terms with the fact that my work will not be done by anyone else. My deeds will not be taken by anyone else, meaning no one else is going to do the amal that I need to do for me. I can't, I can't expect anyone to do the amal that I need to do for me. Okay? Yes, you die and people can do salah qajariya, they can do continuous charity for you and you certainly hope to leave behind things that will uh, do good for you. But hey, that's that's still your salah qajariya. You still have to plant your the seeds of your even your continuous charity by not just your own salaqah, but by leaving behind the people and the impact that would cause people to do good in your name or cause people to do good because of your teaching. <laughs> Thank you.